guys, I'm Flo Crawford, the creator and owner of Hafton Studio. I'm super excited to be here for Spoonflowers Craft Friday. I'm a textile and surface pattern designer and creative mentor and coach based in Auckland, New Zealand. I've been a designer for about 19 years now in the fashion and textile industry and over the years I've really enjoyed bringing texture into my work to create personality, another layer of depth and interest. This is super easy to do to create your own and so that's what I'm going to be going through with you today is we're going to be making our own textures to really give a unique spin on our work and really like have a feeling of like I made this, this is all mine, like I created the whole pattern. Um, so we're going to make a little bit of mess and we're going to find things around the house that we can create these textures with Then we're either going to scan them or take photos of them and then take them over to Photoshop and then Illustrator to make a repeating pattern. Let's get started. I just thought I should give you an overview of some things and some ideas to create textures with, like sandpaper, bubble wrap, um, plastic bags, tin foil, um, hessian um, can be a really good one for um, pouring over or inking up, um, dried flowers, wheat, little sticks or skewers, toothpicks. Um, this is bark from my garden and it has really lovely like little wispy ends which could create quite a nice texture. Um, sponges that you could ink up and then blot um, with the ink. Um, anything from your kind of kitchen sink like this like wire. I've got this peg and clipped a little bit on the end here so then I don't get messy fingers and I could scratch that along the paper. Um, old um, paint brushes where you kind of flip the ink and get a flipped kind of feel. Um, you could use a roller like this, an ink roller from uh, like a printmaking roller to ink up the ink and ink up things like sponges to get um, uh, the, the ink applied or you could use a brush and paint it on like that. Um, I like some nice, a, lot, a nice big stack of um, white paper, A4 size is always good because it fits in my scanner and then um, just a little cheap Indian ink or any cheap black. Um, acrylic paint that you have on hand so it's just easy clean up. Some extra things that you might need or would like are some gloves so then you um, can keep your hands um, clean especially with Indian ink it can get really messy. Um, I've, I've also got this little clear file which makes it easy to kind of ink up with if you're going to use a roller um, otherwise you could just use um, old, an old lid or something a plastic tray or something to put your paint in. I've covered my desk with um, brown paper because I have a lovely big roll of it, otherwise newspaper or anything like that. Okay, I've sped this part of the process up. I'm just going to quickly talk a little bit about what I'm doing here and, the, and to really kind of get into your mind that you're using objects to create um, an impression of that object. So it's kind of like printmaking in a really simple, simple form. You do not need a roller to do this. You can do it with a brush or even just dipping your object into paint. Um, yeah, I think this part of the process is about having fun and just like it's the process part that we all love about art making. So have fun here and explore. So here are all the textures that I've created. Over about 20 minutes I came out with more than 20 designs. So you can do it quite quickly. Um, I just thought I'd show you this because this is this, the roller one. When the ink is a bit heavier here, um, it doesn't work as well for a texture. So I just urge you to get your ink off um, and then try again and then it gets a bit lighter and then try it again because then it gets lighter and lighter. So went to that and then to this 
um, I feel like when there's more in the negative space, they uh, tend to be better um, better used textures for when you take it over into Illustrator and Photoshop. Also, this one here kind of turned out really, really well. This was the um, the Goldilocks kind of um, steel wool that I kind of spotted across there. I really like this texture. I also really love this one here, which was from the wheat, and I kind of just dragged um, that across and gave a real organic kind of um, broken kind of line which could look really lovely in the background of it for texture and then this one is really really faint it's hard to see but it's just a bit of splatter ink splatter from the paintbrush and then this one I really love as well where I've dragged the big brush through just really lightly to create these kind of like lovely kind of textured lines um, the sponge was quite interesting, it's quite an interesting texture, um, but yeah, as you can see, you can really build a texture library really, really fast. Um, some might not be usable, but some you will love and use to years to come. Let's go over to um, and digitize these now. I'm going to scan them in and take you through the process of how I go about digitizing these to use in Illustrator. So here we are ready to take photos or scans of our um, textures. I use a scanner just because I find it comes out with a better result for things like this with like um, just the contrast of it. You get better definition than taking a photo but you can definitely take photos um, just try and get nice and up close in the frame when you're taking it um, and then you can use those but I scan in at 600 dpi this way that my textures will be good for um, lots of purposes in the future. This is an Epson V600 photo um, that I'm using um, and it's an A4 and it scans higher than 600 um, resolution which is great if I needed it but 600 is totally fine. Okay so now is the time where we're going to digitize our textures. I've got them all saved here um, in one folder. I think I'm going to start with this one. So once you open it up, I, the first thing I like to do is to crop the areas that don't have any textures in them. So crop off these kind of white areas just to clean up the image slightly. And then just hit enter. I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can see this. Then you first need to check that the mode um, under mode that it's on grayscale to make a bitmap your image needs to be grayscale because I scan this in as black and white it's already on that. The next thing we need to do is to just clean up the image slightly and make it the blacks really black and the whites really nice and crisp and, and white. Um, you can do this over in adjustments there's many ways to do this but the quick and easiest one is levels. I like to bring up the blacks to make them really black and then to bring down the white to make the white areas really white. If you see this I can kind of really play and change the texture quite drastically with these levels. So I just bring that down a bit to whiten that up and I don't want to lose too many of the like nice stuffy kind of details here so I'll just bring the black to about there. It's already a pretty good image um, but if your image you've taken it with a phone or that kind of thing you might need to do a little bit more editing at this phase. Hit OK. Um, also if there was like a thumbprint or something in the image here that you didn't like, like a brush stroke or something, you could delete it at this point or also clone stamp over here some of the, the textures off to the side to repeat more of the textures. But I'm really loving this one just straight as is so I'm going to go to the next step. Head up to image and then go to mode and we're going to turn it into a bitmap. You click on bitmap then I'm going to make sure that this is on 50% threshold and I might change this to 300. It's fine for now and then click OK. Now this is a bitmap and it's been vectorized. Now we just need to save it um, ready for going over into Illustrator. So go save as and save it as a TIFF. I might just change this to final 
and then hit save. You can leave all these settings as is and hit OK. Now we are ready to take this texture over into Illustrator and do the final tweaks over there. Okay, now we're in Illustrator and we're going to place our texture in here. I'm going to show you the placed option. You can open up the TIFF file and um, edit it from there, but normally we're going to have other stuff going on. We're going to have our passions maybe already started and we just need to place the image. So go File, Place, and then find your texture and click Place. Wherever you click, it's going to place itself. So just click once and there we go. So this big cross through here means it's a linked file and you could go back and edit this if you wish. Um, in Photoshop, there's a button up here, edit in Photoshop, so it will take you back to Photoshop. But with these linked files, um, you cannot place them into a repeating pattern. It just won't work, so you need to embed them. At this point though, we can still recolor them if it's a linked file, which is like, how amazing is this? Um, and but for the purpose that I want to use it for is to actually put it in a repeating um, pattern. So I'm going to need to embed it. So embed is just up here and now it isn't linked so you can't go and edit it but that works fine for me. I can still recolor it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I can add texture to um, an old design or a new design. This is one of my ones that I I did a little while ago that I think would really suit some texture and just giving it a point of difference. Um, it is a great way to kind of go back and freshen up and add kind of a different feel or a different vibe to old patterns. I think it's really good to um, reflect back on old designs and go how can we recycle them and work smarter and add kind of new life to them as well. So that's what I'm going to try and achieve with this pattern. So I've pulled out some of the motifs from this pattern and I'm going to add the texture to them. Okay so now if we are wanting to add the texture to some motifs um, and you're wanting to resize the texture, um, you can, if you don't hold down shift you can kind of warp it like this. You may want to do that but otherwise hold down shift to um, resize. Um, I like to just bring it over my, my kind of my motifs here and have a play around with the size and I feel like that's about right. I'll just change the colour so you can really see where it's sitting. I'd send this to the back of the motif and then I copy the motif and paste the motif. Then I send one of those to the back. Now this top one is going to be our like clipping mask. So you're going to click on that one and then select your texture and then right click and go down to clipping mask. So now we have the texture over the top of this motif clipped to the motif. From here we can recolor the texture. If you click um, A on your mouse, which is the white arrow, and then click the texture, we can recolor this. So we could make it the background color to make it kind of like a distressed look like to do a cream so this is the cream I'll just send that to back and you can see that there. So I'm just going to go through um, add the texture to all these other ones and um, and then we will make a repeating pattern out of it. Okay, so now that I've added all the textures to the motifs, another good thing to make sure is that each motif is grouped. It just makes it really a better way to kind of organize your motifs and when you're moving them around when you go into the pattern mode, um, pattern making mode. Um, so I just make sure that they're all grouped um, individually and I can move them around easy. So I highlight them all and then go up to object and then down to pattern and then make. Within here, um, a pattern options bar should pop up and I click on this little icon at the top to start with and I just move my bounding box around and pull that in or move it to adjust. So uh, now I'm just going to have a play around and um, get this pattern looking right and then we can see what the final look looks like um, once we've got it all finished. Okay. 
Okay, so now that I feel like it's kind of nearly there in the way of balance and spacing, um, all I have to do now is go up to here, um, to the top and click done. So what you should notice that there will be like a little swatch in your swatches over here and I just pull that out and we have our repeating tile. If you find the boundary box, I'm going to add a background to this now. So I'm going to double click and highlight that and go copy and then paste that in. Paste that on top, like directly on top and then color that. And now I have the background of the same as the texture. So it's got this kind of really marbly um, textured look that kind of like rustic, um, a little bit distressed look to it vibe. What I need to do now to make sure this pattern is working correctly is just chuck it back into oh one thing I might do is definitely if it's for spoon flower I want to expand my background so I'm going to just click on the use the my white arrow um, my select tool click on the background and I'm going to expand that just by one percent I have a quick key action set up for this already so that's just going to expand it there you can see now that it's just overlapping that boundary box a little bit. So then I know that I'm gonna, not gonna get any white lines um, when it comes to the repeat. I'm gonna chuck that back in the swatch box, zoom out a little bit, and I will draw a new box to fill. There we go. And you can fill that with your pattern. Um, this little this pattern needs a little bit of work for color balance and stuff, but really loving the vibe that it gives off and with this distressed look. Thought I would show these my original um, and the textured one side by side just to show you how texture can add kind of like new life to designs and bring on different feelings and provoke different emotions. Okay, so I thought I would show you some of the other textures that I made um, in these shapes. Um, just to give you some ideas and to kind of provoke kind of like get you inspired so this is the sponge which I really actually really really love it kind of reminds me of like rocks and texture um, this is the original one that we we did together and then this one is like little um, flicks of paint and it's a really lovely subtle texture so you can make them really subtle and I've changed the colors in here just to give show you the different colors that you could kind of play with color as well. This one is the paintbrush one which gives a real woody feel to it. So you can just really play and, and have fun with these textures. So there you have it. There are so many ways to create textures in your work and this was just one of them. I also love using image trace in Illustrator and vectorizing my textures right with an Illustrator instead of going through the Photoshop phase. Um, another thing that I love to do is use my iPad and create like brushes over there for like linen looks and that kind of thing. I also get out and about and use my phone and take photos of textures like the grass or the concrete or leaves on a tree. And you can use apps like Adobe Capture which make the process of taking photos of things really simple to get over into Illustrator and then adapt them there. So I really hope that you enjoyed my tutorial today and now feel inspired to go and make your own textures. I would love to see what you create, so feel free to DM or tag me over on Instagram. My handle is at Houghton. Also I'd love to share with you the scans that I've made today. So I've created a free downloadable, there'll be a link below this video and also a link over on my Instagram bio for you to download and have a play with the textures and the scans that I made to here today. I also have a Patreon community where I support artists on their creative journey in surface pattern design. So if you want to learn more about that, there's a link in my bio over on my Instagram. I hope you have a happy craft Friday and thank you so much for joining me here. See ya!